What is the feel? What's the vibe out there for this show so, tomorrow? First of all, there's oh, hasn't been that much yet because in about like 20, 25 minutes, I think is when the actual kickoff starts uh, over, I think that they're doing it outside the Uber arena. And so it's, it's kind of strange because so far I haven't gotten to witness like really any fan events or anything like that because nothing has started just yet. However, this morning they did have like a little, and they can't even call it a media day, to be honest. It really wasn't a media day. It was just like a really, really small day junk it because Dave you you know this very well uh at SummerSlam Wrestlemania all of these other events there's like a hundred media right and there yeah. are so many uh I mean there's at least like eight interview opportunities right so it's still not a lot but it's for the amount of people that go but there's a lot more that's happening and so for these international shows like it was for Scotland it was very very small and this time it's even smaller like very very small I think there there was like less than 10 people in the media room. So they did like a little tiny press junket. They had three people there. It was Meechan, Baron Corbin, and Carmelo Hayes. So right before SmackDown. So basically in the next 20 or so minutes, it's the kickoff. And then in about like three hours is SmackDown. So things are really just about to get started. However, on my way to the little press junket that they were doing it, so the mini press junket, that's what we're going to call it, the mini press junket, um, there was like a bunch of fans, you know, outside of the the hotel, lots of CM Punk t-shirts is what I saw. I was like, okay, maybe it's just the people out here, but lots of CM Punk t-shirts and just people, you know, sort of waiting around trying to catch a glimpse of their, uh, you know, favorite wrestler, whoever they can meet outside the hotel. So kind of just like it is everywhere where, uh, you know, people are always kind of go to the talent hotel, not too many, but just a little bit. So I still haven't gotten like the feel yet of like bash at Berlin because again, everything's just on a smaller, smaller scale. I get it. I understand. And you're right. I mean, with these big events, uh, you, there's always a ton of fans, a ton of media. Uh, so are, are you thinking maybe this is kind of where they're hoping the WWE that they open the doors a little bit more in this area? Because like obviously this global attack that they've had lately, if they have no problem having a major PLE outside the States. Is this an area that you think moving forward, Denise, that they're going to target more? I can imagine. So earlier I was talking with Baron Corbin and one of the things that we were discussing were sort of the changes in WWE, obviously, you know, there's so much that has happened over the last year or so with Triple H taking over creative, you know, we've talked about Endeavor and then so many other things, right? So one of the things that he mentioned that I think sometimes we forget is that the talent, this is something that they get to experience a lot of them for the very first time, you know, for so many for so long, they didn't really go and do these international shows. And Baron was telling me like, this is such a cool experience for us, the talent, we get to go to these other countries. He's like, on, on top of that, we come in a day early before SmackDown. So the talent has an opportunity to go and do some sightseeing. And that's something that you know, it's nice for for the talent. And they seem to be very very happy about that so the smackdown crew is already at like you know already here already doing their thing um and that's why they were the ones part of the media junket since they had to get here a little bit early but just based on the fact um just hearing the talent talk about that and mentioning how cool of an opportunity it is for them and then seeing the fans like already just a small amount of fans and I'm sure there's going to be even more at the kickoff and just walking around the city I mean there's so many different you know people and whatnot but everything here in Berlin and this is the cool part is pretty close to each other so the city center here everything's very close like you can go and pretty much just go anywhere within a couple of minutes I mean I've gone to go see like a bunch of little things around this hotel and everything's been like a 10 13 minute walk which is great for somebody <laughs> from Los Angeles I was like I don't get life like this I don't even walk <laughs> to the corner to go to Walmart so it's like um there, there's definitely a lot uh it's just a different vibe Vibe for sure, a different vibe here. But I can't wait to see the fans, though, once I get to Uber Arena and once we get to SmackDown and all of that. I just got a, a text message from my friend, and he's over there, and it's packed. It's that they're waiting, and they're very excited. And um, I feel like uh, all these shows um, that are overseas, like the fans are so, like, passionate. And it's just like it's, it's another level of, uh, of fandom. 
ness, you know, and it's 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 really cool as a performer to see to see that and then uh, that that people get to experience all this, especially talent. It's it's really amazing. Yeah, and I think sometimes we forget because in the eyes of the fan, you see it and you're like, oh my gosh, the talent's everywhere. Like one second, they're in New York. Oh, they're in Chicago. They're in Boston. They're in all these places. And you see them travel places. But I think for so long, again, you just kind of forget like, okay, well, they don't always go to places like Berlin, like Scotland, like, uh, you know, so many other places that they've done these uh, international PLEs. So it is a really cool experience. And I think for a lot of people, you know, it's their first time just having WWE in town and that's why, like, I'm not surprised that it's hella packed over when they're about to do the kickoff. And it's hot, too. So kudos to the fans that are there because uh, it's definitely hot right now. This is the um, absolute most important question you're going to get uh, on this subject. How is the air conditioning? Oh, my gosh. So here's the thing. I feel <laughs> like they did not have the air conditioning on either in the London airport. They didn't, I, I'm pretty sure that thing was off because it was so freaking hot. And then as also at the Berlin airport, I was sweating so much. But then finally here in my hotel, I like busted it all the way high up. I lowered it as much as I possibly <laughs> could. And yeah, it's like it's decent. But when you walk into places, though, like it's not like the cool breeze that you get when you walk into a store over in the United States and you're like, ooh, cool breeze. You don't really get that here. So yeah, that's a really great question. No it's hot over here. No, there's no air conditioner. And I think in Paris, 90% of the places that I went, they have no air conditioner. And I was just on the trains, guys, with thousands of people are in the train. <laughs> oh. It was 100 degrees in that bitch. And I was like sweating <laughs> and shit. And then I see people sitting down with sweaters and I'm like, what like sweaters I, I swear i was like no no but that's that's how it is over there like the, the air con doesn't exist in some places well all right well hopefully uh you found yourself a cool place denise let's get into the wrestling because i'm very and i'm interested to get your take on this uh what do you think the main event is going to be is it going to be the undisputed championship or is it going to be that world heavyweight championship? It's going to be the strap match, in my opinion. CM Punk, Drew McIntyre. Wow, okay. Wow. I love it. I love it. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I look at this card and to me, the CM Punk, Drew McIntyre strap match is the biggest match. Besides that, if, if it's not that, obviously, you know, you're it can be kind of weird not having one of the world titles main events. So if I had to choose, I would go with the world heavyweight championship, Gunther versus Randy Orton. I think that's, I, you know what, I changed my answer. I think Gunther versus Randy Orton yeah. will definitely main event. I think it's going to be that match too, which is interesting. And this isn't taking anything away from Cody and what he's been able to do with that undisputed championship. But I think it's more about what they've been able to do for this world heavyweight championship. No. I think Gunther, you know, Gunther, what he did for the Intercontinental title, he's doing the same thing with this world heavyweight championship. And the fact that you have Randy Orton and him mentioning, hey, this could be, I could be a 15-time world champion which would make him just one spot away from cena and rick flair denise this that gunther randy orton match major implications in that match coming up tomorrow oh yeah and i mean i can't wait to see everybody's talking about how like we're you know a lot closer to uh gunther's territory than you know others so definitely wanting to see like that reaction and for that reason i was like wait a minute i was like not the strap match it's gonna be the world heavyweight championship match as the main event because a lot of people are talking about what the reaction is going to be like for gunther here so i hope it's good because wwe in my opinion has done a really good job with gunther where he has been very very supremely dominant right like his whole time in wwe he's had you know some sort of championship and so for him to go into this as world heavyweight champion it feels like it's going to be huge and i feel like they haven't given they have not given the fans a reason to not be interested in gunther right everybody is into his matches they're into what he does and i think people are excited to see what he's going to look like when he sort of feels like a little bit of like the featured the, the, the featured person here on this show. So I feel like they've done right by Gunther, setting him up for success. And I feel like today is going to be, uh, sorry, not today, this weekend, tomorrow is going to be a glimpse of that. Cody and Kevin Owens, the dynamic, interesting one. What do you think Kevin Owens or what kind of Kevin Owens will we see during and after this match tomorrow? 
So I think a lot of people have sort of been anticipating a heel turn from Kevin Owens. Whether or not it's going to happen, I don't know. They definitely teased that on SmackDown, or at least they teased that Cody Rhodes is suspicious of Kevin Owens. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that was definitely a big thing. Uh, I know that Mark and I talked about it a whole lot on the Saturday show, but I thought like one of the biggest takeaways from that was just seeing the way that Cody Rhodes reacted to Kevin Owens possibly turning on him. And just seeing Cody Rhodes' reaction, I feel like, said a lot because we don't often see Cody Rhodes in that sort of situation, right, where he's not trusting somebody that he, you know, basically went out of his way for to make sure that they even had this match for the uh, WWE Championship. So it, it does feel like maybe it might be on the horizon. I feel like they teased it, but I just, I part of me doesn't know because I do sort of want to see it, but at the same time, Kevin Owens is just, he goes back and forth, right? We've seen it a lot, but I feel like lately this could this could be the change that we need to sort of refresh in this up. I think they can tell a fun story here with some just shifting a little bit of the dynamic here. And I think the way they could possibly do it is by having Kevin Owens turn heel. So who knows? It might be a situation where it does happen during the match. And then we kind of just, you know, go from there. You mentioned CM Punk. And I'm guessing from what you're saying so far, from what you've seen from the fans, CM Punk probably going to get the biggest pop tomorrow at Bash in Berlin. I don't know if he's going to get the biggest, but he's going to get a big one for sure. Just based off of like, I mean, it was a small sample size of people that I saw out there, but it was just the first thing that I noticed. I'm like, wait, everybody's wearing a CM Punk shirt. And this is a small group of people, very, very small group of people that were outside the hotel. So again, it's from a small sample size, but uh, I do think he'll get a pretty good reaction though. Okay. Um, does this does this story continue? Because Punk and McIntyre is one of the hottest stories in the WWE. Is this the exclamation point on this feud, or do you think that this story continues after what we see in the strap match? Oh, no, I think it for sure continues because, like you mentioned, it is one of the hottest things that they have going. It does sort of feel like it's winding down towards the end, but I feel like you cannot have bad blood without – having this third match, this blow-off match between Punk and Drew. I think a lot of people are anticipating that match. They're anticipating Liv Morgan and Rhea Ripley. You know, they're really anticipating those those big one-on-one -on -one feuds that we've been seeing. And who knows, maybe by what happens tonight, we'll have an idea as to whether or not we're going to be seeing Cody Rhodes and Kevin Owens again. Uh, so it, it it's funny because I feel like Bash in Berlin, like the card, for the most part, it feels sort of predictable. Uh, I do think that they're sort of more so relying on the fans and the overall just excitement from the crowd because it does feel like a pretty predictable card. And that's the perfect time for the be a shock and a surprise, right? Right. I that mean, when, you think, be. when you're think when you're looking at a card, and so far I think there's only five matches confirmed, and I'm sure that could change. But right now there's only five matches confirmed. Maybe there is a bit of a shock and surprise. Um, I'm very interested in the mixed tag as well. Uh, Damian Priest and Rhea Ripley and Dirty Dom and Liv Morgan. This should be an interesting matchup tomorrow. I, I, I think so, too. You want to know why? I'm wondering if they're going to actually have Rhea Ripley, you know, get her shots in on Dominic Mysterio. I feel like she kind of has to, right? Like, that's what the story, I think, has called for at this point. So I'm sorry, Dominic, but he's he's going to have to uh, get beat by Rhea Ripley here. That's what I'm, that's what yeah. I want. <laughs> I think everybody wants that. Yeah. He's been such a bad, he's been such a bad boy. He's been exactly. such a bad, bad boy. Yes. I think since everybody wants that, I think you almost get it and you get a shot in and then you get a behind be, from behind live doing something and then turning it back around. So you don't just quite get it yet. So you get a little piece of it, a little taste, and then you got to come back next time. That's what right, it is. I feel like they've been doing that a whole lot on Raw where like every time yeah. you think, oh, Brio's going to take out Dominic. Oh, well, then all of a sudden here comes Liv Morgan. So I'm like, all right, they've teased us. Now you must deliver. I think you get a piece. I think you get like yeah. a body slam or something before she can run him over with a, a lawnmower or a chipper shredder. Yeah. And then, uh, Liv pulls him from danger, I think, one more time. You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna probably be in the minority on this one, but I'm on Team Dom in this whole story. Why? I, why? Kind, of feel, I kind of feel for Dom Mysterio, and here's why. 
Like, if you really go back to the relationship between Dom and Rhea, I, I don't know if Rhea was actually very kind to Dom Mysterio. I think Dom tried his hardest to please her, make her happy, and it just didn't seem like Rhea was. And when did Rhea really start being nice to Dom? When she thought she lost Dom. Isn't mm. that typical? Wow. And then Liv Morgan really showed appreciation and love towards Dom Mysterio. So, listen. I can understand the connection between Liv and Dom here. Love's love. Time and it conquers Dave. all. You know, Time and I out. really. Go ahead. Go ahead. I Go ahead. I correct you on something. People love in different ways. So you're saying that Liv Morgan showed more love to Rhea Ripley. I mean, to Liv Morgan than Rhea Ripley did. I called time out on that. I think love is shown in different ways. And Rhea Ripley showed lots of love to Dominic. How many times wasn't she whispering in his ear and getting all, you know, how they were getting touchy? <laughs> well, it, you know, it's, it's interesting because uh, we're talking about sports entertainment earlier in the show. And this is yes. the you know, the a perfect example of what a sports entertainment looks like, but it's so like close together to reality because there's been so many relationships and I'm going to speak, you know, on David's and where he's divorced three times and he found twice, finally found the, married twice, three, twice, three twice, times, married three times. Twice. <laughs> yeah. But he found the love that he wanted. And I think that with, with Dominic, I think that yes, he loves, he loves a very strong woman, but he needed that nurturing and in that that love that only live can give him what which is she gives him the, the chicken nuggets she allows <laughs> him to play video games oh she God. allows him to be himself and she accepts him for who he is and on, on top of that she even has him as like being the most handsome man in the world when somebody right. like plays with your ego in that and that manner being a man especially a hispanic male of course you're gonna go with that and then she's white even better you know <laughs> so <laughs> i think it's the mustache more importantly than anything else i think it's i think yeah. it's the mullet is the, the mustache, hair is the you. hair i swear to god i'm telling you it's like i met a, a couple of my homies that you know they're born and raised in tijuana or san diego they ended up with, with you know, Caucasian uh, girlfriends because they were the ones who allowed them to do whatever the heck they want instead of us. And we're like, ¿Qué estás haciendo? ¿Dónde vas? Vete a limpiar aquí, vete a limpiar allá. ¿Quién te dijo que puede hacer esto? Like, you know, we're a little demanding. And Rhea, I don't, I she don't demands, know because I don't understand anything you respect. just said. But, <laughs> exactly. But, exactly, but thing, David. <laughs> and quite honestly, Denise, and I, w I, was, I didn't feel this way, but then I was listening to the great album Fearless by Taylor Swift. And I was listening to the song Love Story, and it really hit me in the feels. And I was listening to the words, and then I heard that song, and I said, this is – Taylor Swift is writing this for Dom and Liv. Wow. Dang, Ten years no. before it actually happened. And, You're and, crazy. And it was really Taylor Swift that made me see the light about how genuine this relationship is between – Liv Morgan. It was Taylor Swift between Liv Morgan and Dom Mysterio. Got to be honest. You're crazy, you. Dave. First of all, I have to d disagree with you because I think we all know that Liv Morgan is using Dominic Mysterio. This is not true love. This is not a love story. No, absolutely not. She is using him. Everybody knows it. Dominic's too blind to see it. Um, and I'm sorry. So I disagree with your opinion on this. Dave and Taylor Swift did not help you see that because that is not a love story. <laughs> wow. That, that is definitely a love story. And I think, I think, you know what? Both parties, unlike when it was all about Rhea Ripley, when Dom and Rhea were together, it was all about right. Rhea. This is shared between everybody in the Judgment Day. Look at the yeah, success yeah, that Judgment point. Day has had with Liv Morgan a part of it. So I, I, I'm, I'm on Team Dom. I'll be rooting for Dominic Mysterio and Liv Morgan. <laughs> She's at Bash like in his Berlin. mother. I mean, she's mothering him. He might as well be her son. He's out. She's out there feeding him. She hasn't done anything for Liv. What has he done for Liv? Morgan? You know what I think it is, yeah. Denise. Quite frankly, I think it's West Coast bias. You just hate women from the East Coast. She's a Jersey <laughs> girl. You're wow. jealous wow. against <laughs> Jersey girls because all all you females from California are on this pedestal. <laughs> you think you're bigger and more important. Than everybody hey, else, and you wrote about California girls. 
Let's Chill. speak the truth, Denise. It's because she's from Jersey. No. <laughs> it's because he's she's like, from so Jersey. She's that from you Jersey. Feel she's a beach boy. That's nothing Katie to do with How many girl. other people yeah. have what been to California girl? What about Trickster? What about Sid Rowe? What <laughs> about the, you know? Come on, Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi. Bon Jovi, bon Jovi, bon Jovi, bon Jovi damn it. Bon Jovi, for God's sake.